Hello all, we'll get started at five after. So some uh, pretty big news. It looks like um, Google won over Oracle in the Supreme Court over the uh, Android API and Java API issues. Yeah, I'm seeing that big news. Are we supposed to cheer or what are we supposed to do? And keep writing APIs. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't have to worry about Oracle suing you for adding two plus two in your code. Oh, okay. Instead, you just have to worry about Google now. <laughs> But we cheer because it's not Oracle, right? <laughs> Oracle doesn't have to say. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Jeffrey, can you post the Google Doc to the chat, Zoom chat? Having a hard time getting it up. Oh, actually, I may have spoken too soon. Got it up. Oh, cool, thanks. All right, so if you have an agenda item, please um, add it to the meeting notes with your name and add, please add your name as well to the attendees list. Does anyone have any walk-in items?
All right. Try to share my screen here. Okay, um, let's get started. So let's see, we had at least one PR just point out that got merged during the week <clears throat> since the last weekend. Uh, the last. Uh, hey, call. Taylor. Yes. Your stuff's not working. Like, I don't see anything. I'll just share for you and. Um, scroll around for you. Oh, you don't see the screen at all? No, and I'm realizing in the last call that your screen was pretty much frozen, like on one frame for like the entirety of the call. So I'll share for you and you can kind of just um, tell me where you want to go. Thanks for letting me know. All right, so starting with the this, I was just listing some of the PRs that had got closed so that we can, uh, everyone's aware. <clears throat> um, this one is around governance, so good to point out. And this is the mainly a refactor to make things consistent that Ian worked on and then added some, a little bit more information that we've been discussing for a while um, around how we would handle representation. And that's towards the end. But I think the primary thing was clarifying the wording and then um, bringing it all into one section, which is the bottom part. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I would hope we never actually actually never have to use this section. But the point is that its presence should basically um, keep the whole thing under control. Um, that said, what this does right now is it uh, talks about how to determine whether people are potentially, you know, overrepresenting their company. But then we've got to deal with some other elements of the charter which haven't been covered in here because at the moment we seem to think that um, representation, representation is per company rather than per person and I think that's probably not where we want to be in the long run um, and we're about to do a tech lead election and the tech lead election is also a bit confused in as much as um, it would be effectively a majority vote per tech lead gets you in, which means that if there is a cabal, a, a group um, over, you know, representing people with anything close to a majority, then they can um, pretty much push all the, you know, as many tech leads as they care to name uh, into, into the system quite easily. Um, I don't have answers to either of those things. I'm just going to raise them and leave you to decide what we want to do about it. But I, I think those two points do need addressing as well. All right, thanks, Ian. Let's move on to the next PR, Jeffrey, a set of PRs. Mm -hmm. All right, so co-chairs from Bill. So this is the result of the elections that we had. Um, we have uh, three co-chairs. <clears throat> right now, the rep 
uh, equally sp split. Um, as we're moving forward talking about things, we can decide what we want and how this works out. We have Jeffrey Salins um, from Charter Communications as the service provider co-chair, Ian Wells from Cisco as the CNF developer co-chair, and myself um, for the cloud native and Kubernetes. And this is updated in the charter and the um, main readme. Um, there's another, uh, I think, comment about maybe moving some of this out of the charter into a, a standalone document for the items that may be updated more often than um, the maybe our base charter things that we don't expect to update maybe for years to come versus things like this, which will at least be recurring and there's others. Uh, but we'll tackle that in a, another PR. I think um, that was one of your suggestions, Ian, that we make those updates. And I, I believe that you're, you were okay with uh, tackling it in a, another one. Yeah, Can you that's perfectly fine. Okay, great. Um, so... I think this one is just a notice. Um, so let's go ahead and merge this one, Jeffrey. Go back to conversation. Yep. I, I click the conversation tab. Yep. Cool. All right. It kind of feels like 2020, 21. <clears throat> you can delete the branch. Okay, I was gonna ask you. Yeah, yep. it's good. Otherwise we end up with hundreds of old branches. Yeah, just as a general bookkeeping, I noticed I had some from previous merge requests that I went in and cleaned up a week or two ago. So if you've got some like ones that are hanging out that you don't think are needed anymore, go back in and do a little spring cleaning to the group at large. Um, Good idea. All right. Ready for subdirectories? Yeah. These are ordered and hopefully PRs that we can quickly knock out before we get into some longer discussions. Um, so this one is one, uh, Lucina put in and you're on the call if you'd like to speak, but the quick overview is it's adding templates to make things easier for folks um, creating a PR for different items. <clears throat> and we can add multiple templates in the subdirectory. Um, Lucina, you got anything to add to that? I just started with the, the folder and the general and then if we want to add a use case pull request template, we can do so, and as well as a best practice template. Those can be added to the folder. And a new PR. I think this one can be closed as is with just the general and the folder. All right. Any objections before merging that? The general plus the subdirectory. That sounds good. Well, probably the only the only thing that I am seeing um, is just regarding the headers. Um, well, because uh, probably the the intern is going to complain about using um, not the proper headers, but yeah, it's something that we I can fix later once that the super intern is. Merge. Sorry, I didn't catch that. No, well, the only thing that I was saying is like, uh, for example, description and all the other headers, which are in the, um, the document. Uh, you, Jeff, if you can go back to the document. Um, yeah, it's using the, the, a different header instead of starting from the first one. So the, the intern is going to complain about about this disorder. 
but I mean, maybe it's something that I can fix later once. The, the, I was gonna say, the, Victor, can we merge this and then I'll make a note to create an issue and you yeah. can go in and touch it up? Yeah, that's fine. Are you saying it had no header? There was a it, miss. It, it, the header, if you look at it, you're on level two headers from the start, which is going to throw the linter off. Yeah. So the template could have a, if, if we were going to do anything, the, the simplest would be doing a suggest edit and then add general template or whatever you want to put at the top. But um, that can be added in a new PR. Also, Lucina, I won't step on you anymore. I'll let you um, do the note taking. So I'm not writing over your stuff. Oh, no worries. Thanks for your help. Is that how you spell winter? Yep. Okay, moving on. Victor, anything you want to discuss on this uh, one? Well, I'm not basically this uh, GitHub action from my understanding is just checking the misspelling for pull requests. So it, for now, it's not taking any effect, but for new ones, it's going to check everything. Um, so I don't know if, if we decide to have it or not a good idea or what do you think about it? But just a suggestion for another tool to minimize. The... I think the answer might be just let's commit it and try it. And if we hate it, then we can fix it. Yeah, I like that approach. Why not? Everybody okay with that? Does this um, only complain? Or will it try to auto fix? I think it only is going to complain. Is it going to block the PR until the misspelling is fixed? Hmm. Um, Do we have this question. set in the in the um, the flow? The GitHub Actions flow to block. Um, I'm not pretty sure. Uh, the other thing is like, oh yeah, there. But it is not active because it's just it's just checking on on PRs. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Uh, I mean, and again, that's another reason why I say just commit it and let's see if it causes us difficulties. But I don't think any of the um any of the checks are actually blocking. Um, I, I think you're just, you know, on your own recognizance to fix what they report at this point. That sounds um, totally safe to me. If we're saying it's going to give you some type of feedback, but it doesn't take action, then I'm for merging. Yeah, and if I turn out to be wrong, then it, it's, you know, 20 minutes to fix the whole thing. So I, I wouldn't... Um, I wouldn't get too wrapped up with that. Wow. We reviewed it in the future.
<laughs> Jeffrey foresees problems. So, right, apparently it's not being committed for three weeks. All right, Victor, you're up again. Yeah, um, well, this is a little more controversial uh, because uh, it touches a lot of files. Um, probably the, the most controversial thing is like, the the line length which is set to 80 so we can remove that if we decide like it's not something that we want to keep i mean the only technical reason that i have seen is regarding historical uh, uh, way to do it but um besides that i think this intern is checking um, markdown syntaxes um, other things from other files. I mean, it's not just considering um, markdown files, also consider like YAML or shell scripts or anything, any document is checking the proper syntaxes. And I think it's useful, but uh, we have to configure in a way that we want it. So probably the, the only thing that we have to discuss here is like, uh, if we want to use it and if we want to use with this configuration. Um, I actually do like the line length limit, but it does seem to be causing a great deal of mess in the way it's breaking links up. So I wonder whether we can commit this without the line length limit to begin with and then see how, if we can get a slightly more tailored solution to that part of the problem later. Yep. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I have seen is in some cases when I'm doing reviews in on, on GitHub, I have noticed that the parser is not, is not detecting the differences or the suggestions. So, mm -hmm. but maybe is is another, is not the line length is another reason. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, I, I agree with you. And that's why I wanted to see us start wrapping our text because the diff is terrible without it. Um, but on the other hand, the, the number of changes you'd had to put in there, breaking links across multiple lines and this sort of thing. And if we ever have a particularly long URL, I don't know what will happen. So um, it feels like if we skip that for now and run a few experiments to see exactly how it's treating things, then that would be um, better. And then at least we get the rest of the benefits because I think the header corrections that it was doing where it picked up on the fact that we can't nest headers properly by by eye, um, that was quite handy to know, actually. And another thing, maybe we can start doing like suggestions, like uh, for future PRs, we can encourage to reduce the number of uh, lines. I mean, not not reducing the paragraphs, but I mean at least reducing the formatting. That way, maybe in the future, if we decide to to use it. Uh, it's not going to be a painful at like this point. So disable line length for now and resolve the conflicts. Is that? Yep. Yeah, I, uh, it, it will need basically rebasing on the latest master because again, if once we do that, then the the template issue will basically pop up. This one's pretty uh, pretty boring. 
anything to say, Taylor or Ian? Um, can someone just run a, oh, I see, it's just a, um, a character. Okay, yeah, forget that. Um, yeah, no, I still think, well, I think it's weird on one count that this is the second use of user story when it was the use case when it was the first one committed, but I, I'm still not entirely convinced on numbers, but for as long as we're living with them, then there's nothing wrong with this. Maybe, Ian, do you want to, so merge this, but do you want to open up an issue to talk about like what metadata yeah. are going to apply? Um, yeah. long -term? I would include something around also mapping. Um, I, I think we talked about this last week, mapping use cases um, to best practices, et cetera. Yeah, and I think we might need a design document area as well, which we haven't got yet, but yes. Taylor, do you want to talk through this discussion? Sure. So this is related to um, representation and um, community and uh, who's involved in the community who's contributing. There's a lot of things that this was tying into in various conversations. And the most recent thing where this is applied was um, tied in with elections. And there is a, a lot of feedback as we were already in the election that be, seems an interest to move towards individuals and voices versus the organizations. And so the idea here is to switch the whole interested parties list to show individuals while also showing who they're affiliated with. So when we have um, whatever company it is, if you work for Google or Jeff, I guess Jeffrey, you're, you maybe could be a good one. So charter communications, I think if um, I didn't put a link to our chart or the interested parties document but where it says, um, if you can open that up, the in the code base and then the, the interested parties markdown. So where it says charter communications, it could now say you're uh, there on the top five. We would say Jeffrey Salins, comma charter communications or something like that. And if there's more people, that's fine at charter. That's great actually. So we have a big list and this has no impact on the way we're currently doing limits or the, the representation um, PR that we just did, that Ian worked on, that we just merged. This is only changing this list. So we could still look at it and say, okay, there's five people at Charter. They get one vote if, if that's what we want any changes to how it's used would be outside of this BR. Um, and maybe another point is we already have a mixture of orgs and individuals. So Frederick as listed there, Mars, Nikolai, and then we have orgs. And this would align us more with how other groups have been showing it. So there you go. So this, this is a GitHub discussion, and if if there's if um, I guess we're try, trying to get some feedback, and if folks agree, then we can create a PR. We'll need to add the names for the um, people, which uh, I have some of the contacts. Bill, when he's back, has 
probably the the rest of the list we could just add the people that put on their names on there but if you already know then we could do that but the pr chain would change that that document to have individual names So how much more of the charter would we have to change if we did this? Because again, the customer voting, sorry, customer, the, the company voting seems like it would probably have to be removed to if we were going to flip this round. But um, Uh, Ian, you're you're cutting out for me. I got like one in five words. I don't know if that's. Uh, uh, let's try that again. So, so would we want to remove the company voting part at the same time as we do this? I mean, if we're uh, going to. All I heard was, five, would we want to remove? Did anyone else hear Ian? Yeah, I, I can hear Ian fine. Um, I mean, personally, Ian, I'm fine with it. I mean, if we end up having weird hostile takeovers later, we can address that. But um, long and short is, is if you can represent yourself and we're gonna like try to like block people's votes, which I don't think is gonna solve a whole lot, then they'll just list themselves as individual representation anyways, right? Yeah, it was more <clears throat> that um, as things stand then if a company is an interested party, then the company gets one vote. If we flip it to a individual being an interested party with company representation, then the stuff we've just committed makes sure that their company is not overrepresented. That's dealt with. But the, the bylaws specifically say one company, one vote. I'm wondering whether we take that out at this point as well. Yeah, like I said, I, I mean, so I'm okay with this that. This is um, not changing anything about how we use the list. We could stay the same where we um, have one vote per org and one vote for an unaffiliated. And we still have the thing where if two people are from a company, you can't say I'm unaffiliated. If you're if you're actually there, then there's one other person from the org. So this has no change on how we use it. The main focus here is to allow us to communicate a larger number of individuals that are showing interest. Which, if you look at most of the other projects out there, that's that's the point. Like, what is our community? So if we have 20 orgs, but there's actually only one person per org, then it's not really showing how how large is our community getting or anything else. Now we can also use that information for the governance aspects as well, but trying to give the flexibility of, of having an individual and the org so that we can use that information in the best uh, way. Let, let me go and read what the charter actually says because I can't remember, but I thought it was basically a interested party company gets one vote effectively, which wouldn't be what we would have in our interested party list if we changed to do what you're talking about. And that is not in any way, shape or form a criticism of what you're suggesting. I think it's the right thing to do. I'm just trying to work out whether it's got a knock-on effect that we have to deal with immediately. All right. Well, this is a discussion. So hop on the um, hop on the GitHub discussion, and you can write stuff into this. Where there's no PR yet, but the idea is to put it forward, get some feedback, and if it looks like something to move forward on, then we create a PR. And if we need to update the charter as well, that's fine. We can. Um, that may be a blocker. 
we don't have to continue on this one though, unless anyone else has more thoughts. And let's move on. So we had the um, add values to the charter. Taylor, you kind of had like a succinct list. Bill has these kind of like paragraph style little narratives. Um, there's been some discussion. I don't know what happened, but all my comments got put in the wrong place together. But um, I don't know if people want to dive into this. It's kind of a broad topic of um, kind of the heart and spirit of what we're trying to do here. I suspect if we went into this in the meeting, we would be about an hour over the top of the end of the meeting. Um, I think it's just one of those things where go luck, make your comment. Um, someone needs to basically go and start folding and closing some of those comments off. But um, it's probably better done in the um, in the uh, pull request. I agree. I would say the other thing too to think on is, do we want you know just the short bulleted list or do we want the narratives? Um, I prefer the narratives if I'm being honest, but. Um, you know, that's my own opinion. That isn't to say that there aren't other opinions out there. All right, well, I'll move on. I, I agree with Ian. Um, there's already a lot of discussion here to like look into, you know, please check out the PR way in. Um, if you have a third way of stating values, then please chime in. PR approval process. I don't know. This one is one I think we need probably more discussion on. Like, it says tech leads will do merges, but we haven't really fully established what a tech lead does, Taylor. Um, and um, if I remember correctly, there's no limit on tech leads, right? So what the ratio of like individuals versus tech leads, um, like at that point, do we just leave it as individuals? And as long as we get a quorum, we go or how, I don't know what people's thoughts are on this one. This one seems a little bit, um, underdeveloped in my opinion um i might argue that perhaps our concept of tech leads is a bit underdeveloped so somewhere between a uh, core developers you would see it in openstack where you know you would never try and it was done by i but the number of core developers was constrained you didn't increase it too big because you needed someone you trusted to review uh pull requests specifically um but that doesn't mean to say they couldn't do, you know, they couldn't, you couldn't go off and do something adventurous. It just means that you didn't need to be a core developer to do that. So if we could figure out what we actually want our tech leads to be, are they the part of the approval process? Is that their primary job? Or are they just, you know, people we've nominated to investigate a specific thing, uh, which, you know, doesn't necessarily involve election or anything else? How, how do we want to think about them? On line 180 as well, it says a co-chair vote can be um, uh, jumped. But um, yeah, I lost. Uh, I, I lost the uh, the line. I'll wait until this is done. Yeah, so it's, if you look at line 180 as well, it says a co-chair vote can be replaced by the approval of two tech leads. And uh, that also seems quite a, like quite a low bar. Like I could pair up with another tech lead and say, hey, let's go start replacing people. Line 
another um maybe a, another way to look at this is we don't have the representation um as well established the and the process for electing and the pro and the the power so we need to handle all that before we put stuff in yes for what you're saying frederick and i think that's tied in with the the other as well like what what are what are they what does the tech lead do and there's a follow-up item on the agenda about including other types of leads so what what do these do Is there gonna, is the next one like also broaching the topic of community leads, Taylor? Yeah, that would be part of it. So if, I, I think we shouldn't even call it tech leads. Um, it's more like a, and we can wait, but it's, we need some type of team leads would be equivalent if you thought like a project or something, but, um, team leads or leads, working group leads. So you have the chairs and then you have, what are these leads? They're gonna take on different things. Yeah. So it's kind of maybe you know, technical and what does that mean? Of course, that can be broken down into different things. And then the community side, um, that may be people from other groups that we're wanting that are involved with us and maybe involved with several security groups or the whole chaos community. There's multiple litmus, um, chaos, um, two, two different CNCF projects. There's other ones in there in many different areas. So we may have someone in there that's wanting to ensure that information from those groups comes over and then feedback from us is flowing in. So tying into that, there's the whole engagement you could say marketing to get people involved. So anything around this is what are efforts that we have? Um, and then people doing different types of facil facilitation. So these are contributions. So is what type of contributions can, can happen? So then leads could be focused in any different area or multiple areas, of course. So I think expanding this to say someone is leading within our group to try to help is it'd be good to expand it beyond just saying a tech lead yeah i personally think we kind of need to look at this at large too like if you're going to lead documentation improvements um do you really need to get voted in for that or i mean Typically we have self-motivated people that just kind of step up when we have the five second awkward pregnant pause on the call and they say, fine, I'll do it. Um, you know, technical and community leads probably seem a little bit more official in my mind. I don't know. And I think I like the idea of a community lead for someone who maybe doesn't have the confidence yet to fully dive into like a, a deep technical subject, but they still want to um, help push the ball down the field. I don't well, know. What people's thoughts are on let, let, let's talk about what we need versus what we could have what we need right now it seems is is people who can or, or a process for deciding when a pull request is ready and goes in which again is more like a core developer side of things than it is anything else it's not leading projects it's not leading initiatives it's literally taking an active role in making sure that by saying yes on a pull request they're not going to cause anyone great distress um, that's the thing that will get us moving. The rest of it, I think we could basically, um, you know, take longer to consider calling something a community lead or a project lead or whatever. We may want them. There may be a reason for making the official. Um, that I think is a lot less well established right now.
The, Anyone the else? reason why this, I, I agree with the individuals being motivated and ideally we just have people willing to contribute work. That's what we want. And more than having people, the titles are not important. So we just, we're trying to get people to contribute. Um, the reason why this is in here is primarily around what we have, the wording around like the the governance side, that last one that we looked at for the PR approvals and stuff like that. So having some um, wording that communicates what, uh, how people can get involved. And then if, if there is any official areas that are helpful for us, then those are documented and then how they relate to governance and stuff is the main thing and agree on let's take more time to discuss these this item and the related stuff like the pr approval uh, i think one thing that someone mentioned um earlier and it actually came up on the tag is purpose so what is what is our purpose in any of these and at the highest level on the CNF working group, we're trying to find and, and um, promote adoption of um, best practices for networking applications that are gonna help the um, end users, service providers and integrators and everyone else. So that's at the highest level. So then what is our purpose at a lower level with having leads or anyone else? How does it help us to that higher level pur purpose? Curious, everybody's very quiet. Like, what do people think on the idea of additional leads? Do we have any initial thoughts on like what the bar is set? Um, I do think that whether we call them a tech lead or something else, the people who approve pull requests should be voted on because my assumption would be that people would want, you know, basically a vote of confidence that, you know, the documentation here is going to be maintained and it'll be people who are willing to take the time to read through stuff. Um, you know, if you're someone who's super, super busy and looks at pull requests once a month um, and only like a few at a time, do you volunteer or do you instead try to go for a community lead and try to help lead projects and then dive into PRs and weigh in on when they're specific to something you're interested in? Um, this all seems a little bit complex to me. Uh, I feel like we've been spending months on uh, building the bureaucracy for this work group. Uh, if, if, if our esteemed co-chairs think that this is the best way to move forward, honestly, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> whatever uh, works best uh, for the co-chairs in terms of management, if, if co-chairs feel that they need this very specific assignment of roles and responsibilities. In the end, the work group will work when people step up to do the work. Um, you know, we, we, we can make this official. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm in favor of making this a little bit looser. I think we, we, we just have, I don't know, too, too many roles and then too much, uh, <laughs> too much specificity. But if this works for you guys, I'm fine with it. So tell part of the point with this is it's not to say let's actually specify 30 different types of leads and you need to tell us which one. It's actually to make it more general and say we need we may need leads. Actually we can decide, you know, if we're going to move forward at all on that, but it should not be specific to tech leads. That's really it. 
So if, if, if we need other leadership besides co-chairs, let's make it general. And if someone wants to say, yeah, I want to be a lead for this and that's what we want to document, that's fine. If you're just saying, I want to lead, okay, whatever that means. But making it more broad and allowing it to be more flexible is the point. Well, the problem with that is that if we don't know what those things are, and we don't know whether they even need to be incorporated into, as Tal says, the bureaucracy. And then maybe we're just over-designing this. Um, I, I think to me, the issue is I'm, I'm fine with, you know, trying to understand what the group is doing. I think this is good. I guess what we're really trying to divide here is between active members who participate and members who don't participate. Calling it a lead, well, we can call it lead if you prefer. But in the end, we're talking about people who are uh, uh, we're making we're more formalizing the idea of uh, when people step up to actually contribute things to the group, to the work group. Um, so we want to, I don't know, give them a title. <laughs> uh, but you know, people who are not tech leads or leads, um, they can still comment. They can still contribute. Um, so to, to me, this seems to be more formalizing, okay, who wants to step up and to be a more active of the work group, member of the work group? And let's formalize it in some way and create a list of responsibilities. Um, if that's what we're doing, cool. <laughs> uh, I just want to point to Tal's point too, right? Um, the previous one we looked at around how many tech leads versus how many community votes, et cetera. It doesn't say whether or not you can like supplant both tech lead votes. So, I mean, if we're just saying then that the baseline bar is six community votes, then get six people to review your stuff and then it's merge ready, then we should just call that out. Um, I mean, I don't have strong opinions. Sometimes people like to have, you know, these things like they can tell their boss that, oh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z in the CNCF and it helps them out. So I'm fine with putting this in place if, if we want it. Um, but at the same time too, I'm kind of like, as long as we decide on something, I'd like to start spending these calls going over like the use cases and arguing about layer three networking and Kates versus um, some of these more procedural ones as soon as possible. I'll, I'll, I'll add another point. You know, if this is about people stepping up to, to take a more active role, I, I don't see why we need to vote on anything. Um, anybody who wants to, be this kind of active member, it could be just an open list, add yourself. And uh, that means you have some responsibilities. Um, uh, we, yeah. We, we also have a fantastic set of, uh, of co-chairs and we can rely on them and their judgment to, so if someone's acting in bad faith or is damaging the repository, then uh, we, we have some level of control where we can, uh, remove people. Uh, so I think the, the process is, is important, but uh, I, I would also recommend doing it as lightweight as, uh, as possible. Well, my point is, uh, do you guys really think that any of the people who stepped up to be tech leads or whatever we're calling it are not going to receive enough votes? I mean, we're, we're happy for any warm body, <laughs> anybody in this group who wants to be more active. I mean, we'll, we'll celebrate that. Um, I, I wonder if, you know, with, with this more expansive definition of what it is, do we really need uh, it to be voted in? I mean, any, this is a volunteer position. So anybody who's volunteering to do more work, great. And Al, I, I agree with you on all of the volunteer and anyone stepping up. Absolutely. We want to get people that contribute and we we'll celebrate that. So the, the main issue here is if and if we can split it is about um, acknowledging who is there to help so that other people can come in and find them. So if you're working on something, Tal, and other people are like, I'm interested in that, I want to help or whoever it is, then that helps new contributors. So that's one side. And that can be a, a just an easy list that has nothing to do with governance. So the other side has to do with how we're doing like PRs 
And then further than that would be when we get down to adoption and promotion of best practices, when we go, here's a set that we as a group, if we separate those things, and which will probably mean an update to the charter and so have a separation of that, then it's a lot easier to do what you're suggesting, Tal. Just let people say without voting, I'm working on this if, and I'd like to help. Okay, great. Just add yourself to the doc and there's no voting. You can just say that. Separate that from PR process and we deal with the PR process separate. But the problem right now is the PR process is at least suggested was it's tied to these names. Um, so maybe we can go back on that PR. We don't have to do it now, but the PR process, maybe we want to rethink and have it what I think someone else suggested a few minutes ago. Maybe we have the PR process is only individuals, community individuals. And if we need to add something about org representation, fine, but the PRs and then deal with stuff like adoption of best practices that are promoted also separately. I, I'm in favor of that. You know, as, as Frederick said, um, our co-chairs are making sure that this repository is okay. So they'll, they'll look at PRs. If we really have some rogue member somewhere accepting PRs willy-nilly, uh, the group will be self-correcting. Our repository is not a code base, right? There's nothing, if a PR comes in, it's not gonna break everything. Uh, I kind of feel like we'll be fine. Uh, less, the less bureaucracy, the better. I'm in favor of just having a list. People can add themselves to the list. We don't, I don't think we need to, in my opinion, vote things in. Um, all right, maybe using, natural, using natural language to compile this straight into production. <laughs> right, CICD. Exactly. Yeah, when we say PR, another thing is what are we saying? PR uh, approval, power to change the charter, to add a best practice, all of it. None change of it. the future so of uh, NFP. <laughs> yeah, so we have that problem of what the power is of a you know PR kind of slipping in uh, this technical uh, power and it's actually this broad actual power that goes behind it that I think hasn't been described. So I think that's why people are reluctant or concerned. Um, the other thing that was brought up is, oh, we're taking a long time to accept these PRs. Is that a, that's because we don't agree? That's what I would submit because we don't agree on what the things that we're talking about should be in the charter or whatever. It's not, I don't think that it is because we don't have enough people assigned to it or that it's a, you know, that no one's responsible for it uh, to press the button. So um, those are my things to add. Yeah, and, and nothing is set in stone. You know, a PR gets accepted and let's say somebody looks at it and says, well, I actually disagree with this. So other people, you know, we can, revisit a PR that has already been accepted and do another PR that fixes it. Um, our repository, I think we all understand it as a living document, a li living set of documents that will evolve and change and maybe move back. Um, yeah, as I said, I think we're overthinking this. <laughs> I've got to drop, I, 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 I just got it because I have to drop, but I want to point one other thing out in kind of like to Tal's point is, when we go to like the next KubeCon or something like that, and we try to sell this, we don't want people to think that the barrier of entry is like, you know, here's 4,000 weird things and this place is run like, you know, some former, you know, crazy country that like has like 50 layers of bureaucrats standing in your way. Like if you want to come in and get involved, we want that barrier of entry to be pretty low in my opinion. The only thing, I mean, the, the thing to me, that this could do for us, which would make us better than we are before. It actually plays back to Tell's point that we keep discussing bureaucracy because all our pull requests are on the bureaucracy. Because all our pull requests get discussed in the meetings because no one's really sure 
when the right moment is to push the button and say, let's commit it. And that's why I think that actually spreading that responsibility around and actually officially assigning it would really serve us some good because then, you know, things will happen in between in the week rather than, you know, on the meetings. All right. Um, I think this reiterates what um, started with this. We need to rethink from the, P the PR approval process and team leads. We need to rethink how to make it easier to enter. And we also want to make sure that things are, are, are we protecting anything that we need? So maybe reevaluation of it and say, is there anything that we need to have bureaucracy around and then um, add it there. Uh, right now it's spread all over. Uh, and this is something um, Jeffrey and Ian and I can focus on like from the governance chair side and, and look and to some of the, I think part of it goes to representation. So we can go talk about that and then go back to say, how can we, at least it's been expressed, how can we go to limiting, make it smaller amount of bureaucracy and what are the important things that we do want? All right, we're top of the hour. Thanks everyone. These are discussion items um, as well. So please, at least from the standpoint of what Ian, you're saying, there is discussions and feedback which would help make these calls faster if you go in and add information and especially references. If you have thoughts on something and can give links and references, then that'll help so that when we get in these calls, um, they can move forward faster and potentially get completed online before the calls even here. See you all next week. Thanks everyone, bye.